It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman, and this show is brought to you by PSCoco.com. That is PSCOCOA.com. That's Phoebe Saad's uh, independent chocolate site. Uh, Phoebe Saad is an independent curator with the Cocoa Exchange, which is a registered trademark of Mars Incorporated. TCE is formerly known as Dove Chocolate Discoveries and makes the finest silky smooth chocolate uh, because the product starts with the best cocoa beans, which are tested for quality and flavor by expert Mars technicians. The Cocoa Exchange offers not just premium chocolates, but anything from sauces and spices to brownie mixes, cake mixes, coffee mixes, and martini mixes. Uh, even barbecue sauces, too. That I, that's on the website. I checked it out myself. Uh, if you wish to treat yourself to someone or you love uh, to a sweet and tasty gift, then the Cocoa Exchange is the brand for you. So you got to go to Phoebe Sod's Cocoa site, which is pscoco.com, and check it out over there. The uh, show is also brought to you by emailrevealer.com. That's my website. Uh, if you send us an email address, we can uh, catch your spouse or boyfriend cheating online and get a copy of my book, How to Become a Successful Private Investigator. Okay, got a fascinating story for you today. Uh, today our guest is uh, Kathy Turkanian. Uh, and the, the name of the show is called uh, Find Andrea Bowman, Bowman. And it's spelled A-U-N-D-R-I-A-M Bowman, B-O-W-M-A-N. And you can find that page on Facebook. Now this is a fascinating story that takes a bunch of twists and turns all over the place. Uh, but we have Kathy Turkanian on the phone who I believe is the biological mother of Andrea Bowman. So, Kathy, are you there? I am. I am. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, so tell us about yourself, Kathy. Who is Kathy Turkanian? Well, um, I'm a retired nurse from the East Coast. I live in California now. I'm uh, married. I have no children that live with me, but I have three dogs, and that's pretty close. <laughs> Uh, I came into this story very, very late in the whole cycle of things, but um, that's because my daughter was adopted by the Bowman. Well, let me, let me stop you right there for a second. Let me stop you right there. For, you said you, you're from the East Coast. Where on the East Coast? I'm from New Orleans. I'm a Navy brat. It's hard to say, but I'm going to claim New Orleans. Oh, uh, New Orleans. Collective. No kidding, because you don't have any kind of New Orleans accent at all. No, my mother didn't have an accent, and she was from Arkansas. I mean, we could pull it out if we needed to, but most of the time, we didn't have one. Strange enough. <laughs> yeah, I, people think I have an accent, too. I tell them, though. Okay. <laughs> so, originally from the East Coast, New Orleans, and now you live in California. What, what part of California? I live in Southern California. Um, the area is Riverside. Uh, the town is far enough away from the interstate, nobody knows where it is. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we just drove up and down the whole state of California with the Bernie Sanders campaign and the campaign bus. Uh, oh. Some, oh, yeah, we spent the, uh, we went to places I didn't even know existed. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, California's a big state. I'm quite awed by the distance we have to travel to get anywhere. Yeah, being from the East Coast, yeah, because everything's so close, you just hop in a car, you're right there, it kind of spoils me too. And you really don't think about California as having any country, oh, way yeah. out in the country, you know? Maybe you think way out in the vineyards, but you just don't think, like, I'm in the country. Well, we were up in this mountain called Kelseyville, um, mm -hmm. where, and, and when we looked on the map when we were booking for a motel room, it said 15 miles away. So we said, okay, great, we'll be there in, in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but it was, no, you won't. No, it, it was 15 miles an hour on this mountain in the dark in the middle oh, of the night. It took oh, us hours to get there. Yeah, oh. I know. I, I thought we'd be there in a couple of minutes. And then it was funny, too, because oh. the only other people staying at the motel were all smuggling pot. They were all pot people buying loads of marijuana up there yeah. from these farms and bringing yeah. it back in. So. Go on. I bet Colorado's doing the same thing in Washington yeah. and Oregon. <laughs> so we had a little adventure there. Okay, so now you're retired, and you're living with your three pets up there, and your your husband. Um, now, yeah, 
the story, the name of the story here is um, Find Andrea Bowman. Uh, so, right. so give us an idea. Who, who was Andrea Bowman? Well, she was born Alexis Miranda Badger. That's what I named her. Um, I, she was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I kept her for five months, but beyond, you know, the situation got beyond my 17 years of being able to handle, and my mother convinced me to allow her to be adopted. So that took place in the late part of, or the middle part of 76. I didn't know her. All I knew was the infant. And so as a person growing up and a teenager who lived with the Bowmans, I don't know that person. The only way I know her now is through her friends who came forward on the Facebook page. And from what they've told me, she was just a shy, quiet little girl who, like most teenagers, was just trying to find where to put her foot next. But then I learned some rather disturbing things about her behavior in the last weeks and months before she went missing that put a whole different shine on who she is to me. Um, she had gone to her teacher, and now I believe from what I'm gathering from the friends that I spoke to of hers, she was more or less cornered by the teachers. Um, she just was situation looked like it was getting worse and worse, I believe. But one of the kids, now an adult, told me that she would get on the bus looking very troubled, but one day she got on the bus dripping blood off her hand. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's when the whole thing culminated into what's going on at home. Now, Dennis Bowman had just gotten out of prison for trying to uh, rape a teenage girl along the side of the road. Well, 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 let me stop you there. Let me stop you there. They didn't even know that. Let, let me stop you there. So you were 17 years old, you gave birth to this little daughter, a little five-year-old girl, a little girl, and you kept her for five months. It's around 1976, you gave her up for adoption. Now, she immediately went into this Bowman household? Immediately. Oh, immediately. Okay. And I found out through the detective that Dennis Bowman had lied on the adoption paperwork saying that he did not have a criminal background prior to adopting my daughter. But I found out he did. And the way I found out was a friend of his told me that um, they had tried to join the military together in 1971, I believe it was. And the military let him in. He joined the Army. Dennis Bowman wanted to join the Navy. But the Navy told Dennis Bowman, oh, no, you cannot come in until you clean up that stuff on your record. Now, that's what the friend told me, you know, was never... He, Dennis Bowman never told this friend the details. So in 19, I believe, 72, he either lied to the Navy and got in that way, or he didn't clean it up enough that the, all of it was gone. So um, I think it was an offense that he did as a teenager in high school. Now, have you run and, any kind of searches to try and find uh, what his criminal record was? Well, I hired a PI, and he has, as far as I can tell, expunged it. The, the PI couldn't find anything, and I can't find anything on the search. But now get this. When he went to re-enlist in the Navy after he and Brenda adopted my daughter, the Navy went, oh, no, we don't want you. You go away. So he was discharged other than honorable. Okay. But he went back to Michigan and told everybody he was discharged honorably. So, well, and he disappeared no. for periods of time, I understand. Stop, stop there for that, one second. Uh, now, you gave up this, uh, you were in Michigan yourself as well? No, no. I, this, I lived in Louisiana when my daughter was born, but my mother lived in Virginia. When my marriage fell apart, I, it was the holidays, it was around Thanksgiving, so I went home to my mother. I found out when I got there, because I hadn't spoken to her for a year and a half during my pregnancy with Alexis, and uh, slightly before, and that's for reasons that just are a whole other world. But anyway, I, when I got home, I found out she had gone through a, a big cancer operation. She had a malignancy in her breast and had her breast removed, and you know she was only 38 years old, and they told her if you live five years, you'd be lucky. You know, and if you make it that five years, you'll live another five years. Well, she lived ten years and died. So, my, my question is, of, how did the baby wind up in Wisconsin? She wasn't in Wisconsin. She never got there. How'd she end up in Michigan? Michigan, <laughs> Michigan. 
I took her to Virginia after my marriage broke up. My mother talked me into letting her be adopted. I let her be adopted before she turned two years old. The Bowmans were from Michigan in Virginia because he was in the Navy. Gotcha. Makes sense? Yeah. Now, okay. now, Bowman was married to this woman, Brenda. Did they have any other kids when they wanted to adopt? No. They believed in their 20s now. They believed, and I, I think they were only married a few years before they adopted Alexis, but they believed they couldn't have children. Now, as soon as he got out of prison, she had a baby. Boom. Nothing okay. wrong with them. Well, okay, then wait a second. What did he go to prison for? He went to prison for attempted murder was the original charge, and they got it pled down to criminal sexual conduct with intent to forcibly rape a girl in the woods by gunpoint. Okay. Now... So he got 10 years for well, that. Was this a private adoption, or did you go through an agency? What, what was this? My mother that? went to Catholic Charities okay. without telling me, laid out my whole life before them and why she believed I shouldn't keep my daughter. Catholic, excuse me, Catholic charities without talking to me, picked up the phone and called the state. Well, before I knew it, I was being given an option. My mother could take her or the state could take her, okay? Now, I was only 17, but I was married and emancipated. So, but I, I was afraid, too. I was afraid for both of us, and that's a, that's, a, that's a real wise thing to be at that age, okay? But they played on that, and they played on it to the point of... They convinced me. My mother couldn't take her. My mother had totally destroyed my life by the time of 14. There was no way I was going to let her have him, mm -hmm. my daughter. So they convinced me that there were people out there that would adopt an infant that would give her everything that any child could possibly want. And I had had the worst childhood you can imagine, so I opted for the unknown. But Boy, at the same am time, I sorry. Catholic Charities was also like, I mean, they were using the carrot, saying she's going to have a great life, but also they were using a exactly. stick, saying that we're going to report you to Child Protective Services and have your kids taken away from you? Yes, sir. Isn't yes, that wonderful? Sir. Would you recommend yes. people go to Catholic Charities today and, and get involved with them in any way? Actually, they're still, they supposedly pulled out the year I learned that this happened. They quit doing adoptions. Just, boop, that's it. No more. They couldn't get babies as easily as they used to be able to. Right. Uh, guilt trip people into them and then just outright take them from them. But now they're in the big business of adoption. They own or they're partnered with lawyers who weasel their way you don't want to get me there. <laughs> yeah. Now we've done a couple you don't want shows. to get me there. Yeah, we've done a couple of shows on that, which is why I brought it up. Now, how long was your baby in the home of Dennis and Brenda Bowman until he went off to prison? Six years. Six years. Okay, so she was yeah. uh, still a only child. And then he went off and he attempted murder in, in, in the woods with some little girl who was about 14 years old as well? That's right. He dropped my daughter off to her first grade class at Catholic Church Schools. You know, a little pre-K, K, kindergarten thing. He got on his motorcycle and went about stalking the woods. The roads are way go way back in the woods of Allegan County in Ottawa. Excuse me, Ottawa County is where he spied this poor little teenage. She's 19 years old, so we're still calling her a teenager. I believe very much that she was still a teenager. Anyway, he passed her on his motorcycle spied her all alone out in the woods where he was. He turned around. This is all in the court record. He turned around. She was going north. He went south. And, you know, he turned around and followed her and then turned around again and threw his motorcycle out in front of her bicycle, pulled a gun on her, shot at her twice. They found, they never found the gun, but they found the casings. All right just where she told him they were, but just as he shot at her, a truck was driving up behind him. She saw it, he didn't, so she took her bicycle and threw it out in front of the truck and ran out in the front of the truck. Now, I talked to this woman, and she told me she'd rather be shot in the back by him than have to go in the woods with him. It's so that he takes off, the truck takes off, takes her home. She calls the police. The police show up at her house. She d describes this whole scenario. The policeman puts her in the car, takes her to where they have Bowman stopped mm. on his motorcycle. She IDs him. They take him off. Now, in his possessions, they find a great big knife, too. Okay. So that's where that story starts. So that he, gets, crime he gets convicted. Ends, and that's um, he, he has your daughter for six years. He gets convicted, and he goes to prison for 10 years? He goes to prison for five years. Five years. He goes to Jackson Mission. 
Michigan prison, and they had a riot up there. And